But I oh. don't talk about that on the podcast because nobody really wants to hear a podcast where I'm just complaining about the format. I haven't found it to be that much fun. But that's if you like it, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think the first podcast I said that I thought white and red were clearly one of those was the top, and then I thought like kind of blue and black were a little below that, and then green at the bottom. But I basically that was the most thing I changed my mind on that. I think white, red, and blue are all three at the top. I don't really have a rating for them. I think they're all good. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, green could even be better than black, but both of those colors I think are a lot weaker mm-hmm. than the other three. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this train wreck. Okay. This this rare is great. I would certainly take it. And I did. I, I still I still went like two three in this damn thing. Yeah, I mean, it, even if your deck is great, you can go two and three and best the one in this for sure. Uh, you know, I haven't seen the deck yet, but. Yeah. This pick, I think, I, you know, very easy, and I, I would try my very best to be white, blue, or white, red with this card. So I did. But I still picked this, I think, right? I don't... Or was no, it this? I, I don't think I would. I mean, I think it's just... I think that the rare you took is so good, so much better than... This, this removal spell... It's such a good card, but in this format, I just feel like I don't even want removal that much. Every creature has an ETB. I mean, this pack is bad. There's not really? much for you. Like, it's... I mean, this pick can't be but so wrong. Uh, if there was anything even a little bit better, I mean, the card I think I like the most for your deck is the white 2-2 two, two for 2. It's probably what I would take. But if this had been any earlier in the format, I would definitely, you know, my inclination would have always been to take this triumph. But after playing it more, you know, if I thought the triumph was a better card than the white card you first picked, I wouldn't mind taking it. But we picked such a powerful card that I'd I'd really want to try to stay in that artifact space a little bit more. You don't think like black, white's an artifact thing? Not really. I like this pick. Yeah. I mean, this is fun. I mean, this is another thing you could have done, you know, is take the black card because there's kind of not, you're not missing out on much and then still biased towards the good color pairs if you end up seeing this stuff. Well, yeah, how do you feel about, cool, but... how do you feel about this card in like an artifact deck? Not great. Um, I don't ever hate. I mean, it's a three, three for three. Yeah, it's not. You know, it's not that bad. Like normally, I would probably value that two drop, the one two over it. Um, you know, towards the end of the draft, if you've only got a couple of three drops and that three three makes it in as as one of your last cards, it's totally fine. But I, I really like the card you picked. The needle's been great. And then I was petrified. So this 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 pick I would actually take Oak and Siren. Mm. And again, this isn't a pick I would have made from the start of the format or anything like that. And it is kind of nice that you'll you'll have three white cards instead of two white and two blue. But I think the Siren's just good enough that I would take it over Petrify. Why does having another like is it what about having two and two is worse than having like three? Um, well. I don't want to be. I don't want to be blue black, and I don't really want to be black white. So I still want to just be like white blue or white or white red. So if you take the petrify and then you start seeing red, you'll be in a lot better shape than if you took the oaken siren and then start. Oh, seeing. you think it'll like a little the, bit? It's the last open. blue card in the pack. Like not every. You know, there could have easily been another blue card in the pack that was taken before it. Maybe blue stops coming around. This I like. I would take this regardless of what I took the last pick. Yeah, unexciting, but this is fine. Yep. That doesn't make it to the deck. Maybe you should have... Wait, right, wait, wait, wait. I mean, yeah. I don't tend to even like the cave lands in these kind of decks, but maybe we could take that. But, I mean, yeah, this is whatever. This pack... I don't like that card at all, but 
Yeah, I thought it was good. And then the more I played with it, the more it underperformed. Yeah, I'd rather, if you're going to take a black card, the one beside it, I like a little bit. I think this pack went fine. I mean, I, I like your cards. Now, I feel like I should have picked this. But then no I was, chance. like, stuck. The, the, the glyph is the one I think you should have picked, though. Oh. The glyph is a lot better than the, the other one. The other uncommon. The rare could be the pick. But I, I, the glyph is definitely better than the monument. The glyph is really good. Mm. Um, uh, the rare and the monument seem very close to me. Like, I would probably take, I, I would want to take the rare, but I, I think I'd take the glyph here, but I mean, they're all great in your deck. I like this pick. Keep up. Yeah, I like this more than like an iceberg or something, I think for sure. It's so good with that the uh the thousand moons thing. Eh. Make you blunder would have been need, better. Or even a third petrify, even though it's a third. I'm not a huge fan of this riddle. But, you know. It's not gonna make or break the deck. It it would make or break the deck if you didn't have those two petrifies already. But, you know, but if, if you do, then I think, you know, it's closer. Okay. I'd probably just take this 3-3 three, three pirate or something. Uh, I did not. That's okay. And then I, I think maybe my thought was like, well, if I don't have any blue cards I want to grab, I might as well just grab black cards in case I am forced into it or something. But... Is it interesting? Like, I'm not, I can't say you made a bad pick. I've I've yet to be able to figure this one out. Like, I had a white black deck before. Not that you're trying to be white black, and it was great because I didn't have a lot of artifacts. But almost always my white decks have a lot of artifacts, and mm. you've already got like a tote and stuff. Now it's still a one four. You know, it's I, it's still probably the right pick here. But I just find it to be such a weird card. I mean, we could have taken the 2-2 two -two artifact instead, but I, I don't even know which one's right. Probably the 1-4. One yeah, it's... Sometimes I'm stuck between something that has good stats and then something that, like, would yeah. make my other cards more, like... Yep. You know? Yep. How many petrifies is too many? I think I'd take a third one here over this puzzle door, but I, I mean, you know, the puzzle door, it's okay. It just, you don't have a lot of things that, that trigger from artifacts and it doesn't like to stick around. You know, you, you don't want to just play it and leave it in play. You want to sack it as soon as you have a spare mana. So it doesn't really count for stuff like that. Yep, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Nothing that seems warranting any correction or anything there. I like this pick. It's tough for me to pass this 3-2. I love him. <laughs> it's pretty freaking good. It's yeah. There's always, every format, there's okay. always that freaking card that, like, makes another game object that's really good. Specifically a 1-1 one -one token. <laughs> seems like it. This pick I like. I think if you didn't have any, a lot of, you know, if you had no removal or something, I would, I would probably take that whirlpool. But I think I, the three three looks nice. Oracle. Quicksand. Oh, it's. I don't even know if it's called whirlpool. That thing. Oh. And that might even be wrong. I tend to like to have one of those in my slower, mid rangey decks, or I don't mind at least. And then the blast might be better, but the blast I like more. Well, sure. You like the blast more than the whirlpool? Uh, I mean, maybe in some decks. Do you think there's this... a lot of decks I don't even want to play the blast? So, do you think Cosmium Blast is like an aggressive type of like combat trick or no? No, 
No, I don't think of it like that. I imagine it's it... good for like blowing things, out, like blowing opponent out when they double block or something. I mean, it would be no better than a combat trick at that, though, and 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 they get to block first. It's not like that you can kill it and then attack for damage. It's it's much better at killing an attacker. Oh, okay. And this. Yep. And this. And. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There's nothing else. And I'm... did I play that? I don't remember. You should have grabbed the hammer. This and that. I think I like the hammer more. You've Oaken Sirens. Or wait, you only have one of the Oaken Sirens, but it's close. This is close. This is good with Sirens, you said? I think so. Oh, I mean, yeah, because they have Vigilance, so they can still Vigilance, tap. yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and it can, it's not a bad card anyway. It kills an artifact, so. Uh, the way I see that card is if you're, like, at all interested in the equipment, it's usually pretty good because it's also a disenchant. A slow, expensive one, but... Yeah, I mean, this is kind of how a lot of these drafts go for me. Like, I think, you know, you, you did a good job on your early picks. You You took a great white card. You found a lane that was at least, like open enough to get into a good color pair but it wasn't that open and but there's no way for you to like switch out of it and get a better deck it's just like you could have ended up with a deck that was like a nine and instead you probably ended up with a deck that's like a 6.5 but i don't think it's really your fault is there anything you think i could have done better then well I mean, there's definitely some cards you're not going to like much. What did you not play? Like, I would have played the Hammer. Um, maybe the Landmark. I regret having played with this. Yeah, that game. one's bad, I think. And I was being stubborn for some reason and didn't take we it You already out. have one landmark. I mean, I'd say the cards you have that aren't great, right, are that Self-Reflection, the 3-2 for 5 Blue Echo, so the two cards on the end, then the Sage of Days, the Riddle I don't love, but it's not terrible. Uh-huh. The rest of the stuff's pretty reasonable. And, I mean, it's not like you took those cards and I went straight. Like, I said, like, yeah, I'd probably take something over the riddle. But the riddle's, like, the least offense. Like, I think by far your three cards that don't fit the best are those three blue ones, though. Reflection, the Echo, and the Sage. And, like, I don't even remember you picking them, right? So you took them, like, over nothing. It's just you got into this deck. I think it was smart to get into this deck. I would have got into the same deck. And then just, you know, it was open enough that you didn't have to move out of it, but not open enough that you were going to get a great, great, great deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think this deck is better than a two and three on average. Okay. I think on details to look at the games, right? Is that how that works? Okay. Let's look at the ones I lost. Oh, what's my deck two? I doubt okay. you could have changed too much. Put this in. Yeah, I mean, that's not the worst of the bunch. I was trying to, like... Okay, so I guess I you put in... You cut any of the three that I like, or that I didn't like the most, so I don't know what you cut. Uh... The Blast, it Yeah, the like. Blast. Yeah, I mean, the Blast wasn't wasn't great. Um, I would have probably rather cut that six mana blue card, but yeah. What? Okay, so my logic here. Let me know if this is like a good way of thinking it or not. And okay, it does, there's this tangent to this too, where I thought, okay, I don't have a lot of like super good cards that will stick around effectively. Things usually get removed, like a creature and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought I should like try to dig with Sage of Days, Confiding Riddle. The Araska, like this pirate hat, so I can like just somehow get to this as quick as possible. 
Um, and that also brings me to that tangent of, I think it was like episode nine, where it took me two years to get to this point. I've only like recently actually solidified him. And then when I heard Lola say it, I was like so mad that no one told me this earlier, even though I've been streaming and playing for so long. Um, what is that? <laughs> that it's like there's a lot of like synergy stuff happening and then uh, people pick a bomb and then they try to like build their deck around it and Lola said there is no need to do that for the most part because a bomb is already good within itself it's usually already amazing so then and you just yeah, and then if you try to build your deck around it with a bunch of like very mediocre, like bad cards to make your good card better, then you just have a crappy deck, and then your bomb never shows up, and then you just lose. Um, I think I don't think you did that here in any way, for what it's worth. Like the smithy, it needs a little bit of help to be great, but the thing is, like the archetype that it goes in, it's just naturally going to have that help. So I mean, and and I and I think it's totally fine to draft cards that try to find your bomb. Like I think that's not really the kind of thing he was talking about. If you're worried about that, oh it's no, just I, like, it, know, that's sometimes, not what I'm worried about. Yeah, I can't think of a great example right now, but it's just like sometimes I'll have this card or whatever that's that's a, a really good card, and then when I'm looking for my last few cards. People are always suggesting things that happen to work well with this card, but are bad uh -huh. in general. And, I, and I'm always like, it's not, you know, I, I tell them it's not my commander. I don't want to get to start with it every game. <laughs> it's going to die some of the time. Like, if I have to play three things that are awful in my deck in order for this to be good, that's, the, that's not the reason it's so good. It's so good just because it's good. I wish I could just have, like, an example ready for you, but that kind of thing comes up a lot. I definitely don't think you did anything like that here, though. I used to. <laughs> That's fair. I used and, to. And I think it's a great idea to try to find your bombs, and that okay. does make the sage and the riddle better than they normally would be in a in a deck like this. When you have cards, you know that you know it, it does make them better. They're just kind of at a pretty poor rate. Like I like the sage kind of only in blue black. Like you at least do have this other descend card and stuff, so I think you have a little bit of a package that works with it. But, but not yeah, that. it's it's not perfect. It's it's better than what you have in your sideboard. So, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, and then Lola said, like, just just get your bomb and then just draft the rest of your deck to be good by itself. And yeah, and as a general rule, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I think it was only until, like, maybe, like, three months ago that I started, like, noticing that all these good cards that I'm, like, picking, even if I have, like, three of them that are bomby and I try to build around of, around them, it just, like, doesn't work out. And I'm always, like, crying, where are my bombs? Where are my bombs? And then I just, like, realized there's a pattern going on that if I don't draw my bomb, then the rest of my yeah. deck just fails. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, and you can see that. You can see that on some stats, too. For for certain cards like that, like when you draw oh. them, especially like let's say there's like a five color card or something, so you really build your whole deck around it, you know, like this five color saga or whatever. And you look at its stats; its stats are pretty good. But then if you look at like how it how your deck does when you don't draw that card, it's yeah. like a huge drop off, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you build your whole deck around a, a certain thing, and you you know you have to get it, it has to kind of like survive and such. Rev, it wasn't my mana curve, actually. I would check my curve, I would check my creature count yeah. and my spell count, and for some reason it still wasn't working out, so I just kind of scratched my head for, like, two years since I started playing Magic. And then only, like, recently did I figure it out, finally. And then Lola, in this fucking podcast that came out forever ago, says it, and I just, like, wanted to, like, beat myself over the head for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough to, to balance between synergy and power. That's why I like that 3-2 Cloud Guard is just so good. He's just a good rate guard, and he's bringing in a 1-1, one, one, and the 1-1's one, an artifact, and just... You don't have to work for it, basically. True. Okay, so let's get started. I'm on yep. the draw, I think it says. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. What did I scribe for? 
I put the calorie on top. Cool. And then, oh my god, I put the freaking land on the bottom, and then I regretted that forever. Yeah. I think I would. I think I would have just kept them both. If, if this, if you didn't have this five drop, I would have bottomed it. If the five drop was a four drop, I would. It's close, I think. So you I don't think, think you're crazy for putting on the bottom. And you have a pirate hat that can try to find you more lands too. But the pirate hat can also discard the lands if you happen to draw a few too many. So I, I lean towards definitely lean towards keeping the land. So if. So regardless of whether like of how many like two drops I have in my hand, if I have one five drop or a four drop, I should have yeah. kept this, you think. I don't know. I mean you have more of those in your deck too. It's not like it's not like we have one top end card that we can you know, I it's it's you can do it either way. I mean this the way you did it now, maybe we'll play the pirate hat and discard the three two and try not to hit a lot of lands. You know, there's, there's a few ways to play it, but Either way, it's I don't think it's crazy. Okay, so when they put this out, I was sort of like, I didn't know, I, I guess, like, there's another thing you guys also talked about is to, like, get good judgment. And when I ask you these questions is to, like, build judgment because I have poor judgment. Um, is that I didn't know if I should have tried to petrify the frog so they couldn't tap it no more, or should have petrified the 3-1 so that I could attack it and try to, like, get value out of the Kellen. I don't like that too much. I mean, we're again, we might just be asking a little too much out of our card. We played a two drop. If it trades with a three drop, the three drop drew him a land, which kind of sucks. But if we get to attack, trigger it once, trade with a three drop, like it's still kind of done its job. It really depends on what else you have to do with your mana. Um, I think that there, there's a case maybe to be made for just playing a one four, not even attacking because. Maybe later we pirates had it or something, but mm. I don't think I would. I don't think I would put it on the frog. I mean, the frog can't even get death touch this turn. Uh, if you put it on the frog, I mean, I think you'd still want to attack. And then this I is okay. I just feel like this is going to get in maybe one hit, and then they're going to play another card that's just going to blink this two three most of the time. Yeah, I think that's what happened. And then we've used a petrify on a three one. And the rest of our hand kind of stinks. I think Mac was talking when he was like playing one of the 64 thingies. He was like, this is one of those hands that you keep and lose because it's a decent hand. But then like, yeah. it's a good hand I mean, because you can cast all your spells. But then later, like afterwards, there's not anything impactful. And I feel that often. Yeah, you also just had like... It, you know, you drew some of your not great cards, like the landmark with nothing to do with it, you know, the one four that kind of unimpactful, the three two. So there was that as well. Yeah, that's gone. I mean, that, that goes fine for you, really. Like, it's worse if they just play like a three four for four or something. Then you just feel like, ugh. Oh. Uh... But the fact they had a removal, I mean, it's not that. Not because that. at least they didn't add to the board. I would be way more behind. You think you, you're yeah. saying okay? Frogo attack. Beep bop bag. Like the way, another way, an odd way to look at what I'm thinking is essentially we trade like because it's disaster that we've petrified this three one in a way, and we have a <laughs> one four and a one two and a tote. Like we have so many ways to block it, right? Yeah. But really, we didn't necessarily trade the Petrify for the 3-1. We really traded the Petrify for that removal spell they cast on our creature. Ah. Because they never would have done that if we didn't Petrify the 3-1. So, like, ah. it looks really bad right here. Like, we've got, we can just make two one ones or whatever, but it, it really, in that would have been a good trade on the 3-1, but they would at least still have the removal. So I don't think it's as bad as it necessarily looks. Because there's no way that would have been their turn. 
Okay. Let me timestamp that. Uh, no land. That's shitty card. I should have played a creature, maybe, instead. I think I was trying to, like, I, mean, I was desperate for I land. I don't like this. None of your creatures are doing much. But, this, this can start get you looting. Yeah, that's what this, I thought. The, the then discard, I could... That six mana thing is basically free. No, I, I like this turn. Yeah, I mean, you can't really prepare for this in any way. I think this card is so shitty. It's it's one of those cards. It's not that bad, but it's it's never optimal, I don't think. And on a frog, like I, I don't know. I I wouldn't have been able to. I would still attack. Ran right in there. Yeah. Whenever I get caught by that, I feel like really insulted. <laughs> And then I did this, and then that, it was over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess we're looking at this, so you can essentially give me your commentary on like what would have been the better thing to do, even if the situation was like non salvageable I mean, if we want to use hindsight a little bit, you know, keeping the land definitely, probably just attacking with Kellen and letting it trade. Okay. Then developing our board a little bit more, probably getting a pirate, and we're still going to lose a creature to this frog. We probably get to loot away this this one thing, so we're like a card deeper, and we might be able to have like a one four out already because we have an extra land. But I mean, they're still going to get to cast this five five, and we're you know we have we might have our removal. They they would still have theirs if we did. I don't think it's ever going to look too good, but. It probably could have looked a little bit better with a little bit of hindsight. I wasn't like, I didn't think your plays were too, too bad at all. Anyways, I lean towards keeping the land, and I lean towards not petrifying that thing. Like I said, I don't think it's disaster because it got their removal out of your hand. At least. Do you think I should have attacked to loot for more or no at this point? Just to just to loot. Yeah. No. So. Into like a three and a five. No, <laughs> that's a bad idea. Okay. What is this? I like little... putting the counter on the other creature though. Because I wanted to be able to trade with that one at least, and not well, and this one, and not just like chump. I mean, you can't really like they've got this equipment they can move around. If they don't move the equipment around, I'd rather block with a two three and a two two than one three three. Oh. Because they can only kill one of them. Also, if they attack with just the 5-5, five, five, you could put the pirate sat on the other creature, and it's mm -hmm. a 3-4, but as a counter. Oh, my God. Um, so, I mean, I don't think it's going to, like, if the game was closer, it could matter. Oh, my God. No, I think it mattered. <laughs> because it's, I'm at that point with, with, like, my skill level where it starts to, like, come down to very, very minute things that will later impact the rest of the game. I mean, I think it's definitely better to put the counter on the other creature. Okay, so it's, like, generally better to have two creatures with the Vita power. I guess, yeah, that's true. You're going to be in bad shape if he puts the moves, the equipment, attacks two five fives either way. If they don't do that, if they just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sometimes it's, it's... Putting it on that one, that's weird. And then I was fucked for the rest of the game because, like, I couldn't do anything about a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, no, you weren't, and I mean, you weren't going to be able to no matter where your counters were. Did you sneeze? No, I sniffled. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think your counter placement is going to cost you this one. <laughs> You're in pretty bad shape. Yeah, Roaming Wisp, we out here learning. I'm here learning that I'm bad at counter placement, which very much justified commentary. <laughs> With some hindsight, I'm just like, oh my god, it's such a big bad. Fuck. 
just looked at the cards you drew and looked at the cards they drew and thought you both played remotely competently, I find it hard to believe you're ever supposed to win this game. It just seems... I mean, there were a few things you might could have done a little bit better, but I think you're ever supposed to have won this Would it have mattered if I blocked with my 1-1 one -one flyer versus this guy? Probably better to just keep this one because the butt is bigger. I don't think it matters. They're at 17. And the frog can block a flyer anyway. It's not like we're, we're not killing them and jump blocking to, to victory here. That's true. Okay, attacky. Attacky, I took seven. And then it was just very. Okay. I mean, I most out. of my most of my brain would be telling me don't expend any energy on the scheme, and you're nowhere ever gonna win it. But if I think if you're ever gonna win it, it's gonna involve like flipping that landmark. Like killing him over like two or three turns while we barely stay alive, but it seems like really, really hard to imagine that happening. Well, I'm just going to keep going, and you can tell me if there's anything that's worth commenting on. That's fine, yeah. I mean, the fact that they're only attacking with one creature gives me like the, the, the tiniest bit of hope. I also have both hands. I also have them. Oh yeah, then I did this really asshole thing. <laughs> Cause I thought I could loot for something better <laughs> by attacking with my flyer. Does and... it even fly? Yeah, because I descended enough. Okay. Um, Do we have anything to craft with in the graveyard? Um Where's my graveyard? How do I look at that? And it's down there. Oh, uh, yeah, that thing. Okay, you do. Um, and then before even blocks, they gave a death touch just to like flex on me. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just like re-equipped it. <laughs> I mean, I think the only way to have had much of a chance is to flip that landmark this turn. I, I think just flip the landmark and then tap the 9-9 nine -nine on their turn was the play. Mm. Okay. You're still going to – and then, you, then you're going to have to draw – then they're going to have to, like, not do much, play too cautiously. Then you're going to have to draw something else. Most of the things you have are enchantments that they can they can kill with 3-4 anyways. It's, it seems like a real tough ask to win here. They could also just kill the landmark with the three four once you flip it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now they're attacking with both or what? I would just it seems like you should have tapped the nine now. Like that. Oh, I did a dumb thing and used this ability instead after blocks for zero. For yeah. Didn't use any abilities. Oh, I didn't use it. I just blocked. <laughs> I thought about using the ability, and then I realized I didn't have enough mana because I don't know how to count. This game was over a while ago, honestly. No, um, yeah, it was. Oh, like a petrify, <laughs> and then they like moved the equipment around. Yeah. I should not have tapped the frog. I should have tapped this thing because that. Tapped, is... First of all, you should have tapped nothing on your turn because it has flash and it's going to stay tapped for less time. Oh, I wanted yeah, to attack the frog it. Frog seems like an odd one to tap. Oh, because I wanted to you be able wait to attack. Their turn. Oh, you want to do attack? Yeah, so I could loot. Right. You had a reason. How much are you taking, though? Oh, I died. That's how much I took. I mean, you're not dead on the board. Oh, I yeah, mean, you are. They yeah, just moved yeah. the equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay, so the to note here is counterplacement. 
dash. Um, and then more losing games with deck three. What did I change? Oh, I took out the self reflection. And then I put in this Not thing. Identified. Okay, yeah. I like it more than what you had. It's a creature. I don't usually play it, but it's fine. Turn. I got to go. Cool, cool. Oh, instead of playing a three drop, could I have? No, I guess I shouldn't use this. You could have, but and I was worried you were gonna. <laughs> but no. <laughs> okay. Well, glad I didn't. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why didn't I attack with this? No idea. Maybe the I just flies, like. We oh, can't oh. even use it, Anna. You're gonna do it. Why didn't you attack with the 3-3? Three, three? I don't know what I was thinking. Well, this is unacceptable. <laughs> oh, I thought they had that stupid little one-drop robot that gives minus... Uh, That's what I'm it was. Not... You even have the brackish blunder if they have it. You have just attack. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess if it's been pausing the whole time or something and you noticed it, you can do that. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, th this was a, a, a well, no, because then you'll you miss your attack for one. I was going to say you could have tried to do the map on the 3-3 three, three with the siren, but then you don't even get to attack with the 1-2 if you hit a land, so maybe that's not worthwhile. But I would definitely crack that map. I don't even, yeah, I don't even have a huge preference where you put it as long as we spin our mana that turn. I would have had to have some sort of arena tell to make that no attack, that's for sure. I, I think I just took take it. this for sure, yep. Yeah. If they had left, if they had left their five four back, I think you have to you have to petrify it and attack. But since they didn't, I would just attack like you're doing, and then I just play the three two flyer. Because I mean, if they keep, and they did. Have the they have. Okay. I'm just gonna let it get me a little bit, I guess. I don't think we're supposed to. I don't know. It's close. You you could definitely change your play here. I think I bounced it. Yeah, after you can do that. Block. It still spends four mana. I think it's fine. And then you would definitely want to petrify. Yep. Did I block? No. Oh. Then they bounce McKellen. This still looks quite good for you. I'm sure there, I mean, there's cards that change things they can play, but it looks Why pretty good. Why did I attack with that? You should be attacking with everything. You did. Oh, yeah, I was petrified. Okay. Yeah, and then you're going to play a 3 2. I mean, the game looks good to me, but I'm, I'm sure I'll see what they play here soon. We have a lot of stuff. Oh, they wiped Goodness my... Gracious. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I didn't either. And then I from there on, I couldn't now. make it back. Yeah, I mean, I can obviously, I can see you losing from this spot now. I mean, it's still winnable, but that's a heck of a card out of the blue-white deck. 
Yeah, and I think they started putting out, like, the cloud guards or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I would play the flyer here. Yeah. Flyer, flyer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like this, and I'd play both the creatures. It's nice that the 3-3 three, three can make it so the the other 3-3 three, three can attack. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Now it's not great. Don't really have, I mean, you can... Probably have to send. I don't know. Yeah, just, right. Probably have to just send everything or nothing. I think, or maybe like everything but the three three on the left. I don't know. This just lets them go ahead and do this with their one free mana and everything. I forgot they had that in their hand. Because I think but, I mean, I it's, it's it. not going to be good. Like they're going to do that if you send more, and then they have a one two to block your one one. No, I don't think it gets any better, really. Okay. You're probably just not supposed to attack there, but like, you know. Yeah, probably not. It's going to get you one way or the other, but that made it a little convenient for me. Yeah, I, I was like, yeah, fade that out, fade that out, and I'm not sure it was right anymore. Well, you know, a way to look at that is like it didn't really free up any attacks in the future turns. Like, if we got to do that, and then we're going to get to attack with everything the next turn, that's a good reason to do it, but... Took it. Oh, okay. that's how I lost. Yeah. Well, you lost <laughs> that minus two, minus two that came out of nowhere. Frickin' four wipe. This thing having lifelink is obviously a... Yeah. A you are also losing to that. And they brought back more stuff. Try to look for something, didn't work out. I think you played pretty well. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Then I couldn't make any more 5-5s. Five five, uh, one ones, I mean. Yeah. And then it was just done. Once that Bat Lord hits you one time and they gain some life and everything, it's pretty bad. Okay, so that's that's how that went, I guess. Cool. I don't feel so bad about that one now that I look back at that. <laughs> okay. Uh... What else did I want to look at? My data thing. What else? Okay. I don't remember anything in particular in this one that I cared about that I lost. Okay, let me look through this really quick. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Question. 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 So, do you think I should have traded with that? I do. If they block. I wasn't gonna just like stop you and everything, but yeah, it seems like you should attack. Uh, like, you don't have a fight spell in your hand. Maybe they have one. You know, like, it just seems like they might value it a little bit more than you. I, I think okay. there's no reason not to not to send both. Okay. If you're happy if they block or if they don't. I also don't think it's a huge deal. Should I have traded then? I think I would. Okay. It, it works out fine for you when they play that 4-3 and, and hit a land, though. 
Now this is bad. What? Well, now you're now you're like sending your three three in when they can block with their three two, and your three three was good enough to trade with their four three, and you have a two two that was able to trade with their three two, and now your two two is just doing fucking nothing. <sighs> okay. So you've kind of traded your three three away for a worse creature and made your two two useless. So this this attack was real bad. Okay. The other stuff was all fine. This is not fine. Basically, just because they get to, you know, you're trading with the three two, and you could prevent four damage with it. They don't even, they didn't even want to attack with their three two into your two two the last time. So, yeah, this this is not good. Congrats. They play that thing that puts counters on the stop. It wasn't going to be great for you anyway. But oh yeah, this was just full of awkward decisions for me afterwards. Because I think I like bounced this at one point because I was trying to like avoid more damage or something, and I was just going to gain yeah, anything well, more I mean, life. So far, besides that one combat, I mean, I've agreed with everything you've done. Whatever they fight with, you're going to bounce here, right? Mm-hmm. Have to. Now you need to block that 4-4 four, four with your 4-2. No! Well, this is a play. Actually, I mean, if you can find one damage, this is a better play. So I don't know what's in your deck. If you've got a lot of map tokens or whatever, this might be better. Yeah, this was, um... I feel like it's likely not better. Unless you have quite a few things. Because, like, even just a land is, like, pretty good at stabilizing you. If you just make a trade here. And then they play a one-drop, which ruins everything. Well, that could have done it if they didn't have a one-drop. You probably would have killed them, so... Yeah. yeah. If you had a couple of things like that in your deck, I can respect that decision. Yeah, the deck is like an explore type of thing going on. I don't necessarily... You only needed to find one damage. I mean, I'm not putting them on another play that turn, really, so... Like, if that was where your mind was at, that you just needed to find one more damage, I think that that's totally fine. I don't agree with putting the counter on this thing at all, though. Do you have any heuristics for where I should play my, place my counters? Oh. I mean, it didn't really make any difference if that was a 5-3 or a 4-2. So, it if I place a counter... trades with all the same stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's fuck from here. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's something to note. It's to place my counters, and I guess it's like... Place my counters where it would make a difference. I mean, that game is, if we hadn't made that one attack, we would have taken slightly less damage, been in a slightly better spot. And then if we just, maybe if we made that trade instead of, instead of chumping, and then we just like cast, you know, I mean, it might have been winnable. Their hand would have had to be like not very good. We probably would have gotten screwed by that, whatever this four mana artifact thing is that they play. Like they yeah. could have done different things with that and probably blown us up anyway. But a few things here and there in that game could have made it a little closer. I don't know exactly what the board would have looked like had we not attacked into the three two that one turn. But it might have looked better to you might have had a like it might have been more incentivized to make a trade. Okay. Um well, that's that for that. And are we ready for a draft? Always. Let's go. You know what's up with Lola by chance? Did he die? Definitely not dead. <laughs> we did a podcast like two days ago. Has he not been streaming much at all? Like I typically I sleep when he streams anyway, so oh. I don't notice like when he goes on long hiatuses. Mm. 
I mean, he had his life with, you know. Uh, yeah. It's all kind of public, I guess. Basically, he went on this va vacation. Okay, I don't know what happened on the vacation order, but he went on a vacation that was going to be like two weeks long. So there's going to be a break for that. Then he got back from his vacation, and he said there was something going on with his, like, his girlfriend's family or something. Like maybe somebody was sick or something, it seemed like. Uh-huh. And he was, like, real busy with that, he told me. And then, so I didn't, like, pressure him much about anything. And I'd say that was at least a couple of weeks. And then, maybe even, like, a month. That, But I think there was more to it that he didn't tell me that had happened, too. Because then when he came back, he was like, oh, we broke up. You know, so I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. So I think, like, there was a vacation. Then something happened family-related. Then there was a breakup. Then he tried to come back and like he's slowly doing it or like I I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. Okay. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, because like he started streaming sure. again. I don't know if he's doing a lot of coaching or if he's just like kind of chilling or what. Yeah, because like he started streaming again and then like I went on his stream and then like his apartment was like cleaned out in the background. <laughs> yeah, he said she basically took everything. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, okay, that explains a lot. Yeah, so, I don't know, I mean, I know he's playing plenty of, and, like, he made day two of the Arena Open, not this last one, but one of them, like, in the recent past, oh. and then just didn't play it, like, couldn't, didn't find the time to play it, so, I mean, stuff must be going on if you're just, like, not finding time to play day two of an Arena Open you qualify for. Yeah. So, I don't know exactly, but... Oh, he streamed yesterday, I guess. Because I'm thinking, like, well, maybe after uh, I, the coaching sessions I have with you, he would be, like, mm -hmm. the next best person. Yeah, I think it would be good. Okay. I think, he's, I, think I mean, I have not, obviously never had a session, but I think he does a lot more coaching than me, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I've asked, we've, we've shared some, like, I've asked him some questions about what he does and stuff. Like, we kind of approach it similarly, I think. At least. It sounds like it from the podcasts. There's like some um, like differences, but n not really all that much. And it was just like more situational than anything. Like you had a little bit of a preference or something else. But, ooh, gold. You're not sharing a screen or anything with me. Oh, shoot. I don't know what you just said. That's why I mentioned it. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I I bought this strap of gold with ten thousand gold. Okay. Got it. Ready, Freddy. Oh. <gasps> Oh shit, I need to take my meds. Okay. Uh, ooh, shit! Boat! Really good card, really good color. I would take it and kind of hang on for dear life. Maybe we'll get to do pirates. Ooh. Ooh, maybe we will do pirates. We get to go red blue. Yeah, I mean stats wise that glyph is the best non rare by quite a bit. It's really good. So I would definitely take it. I mean, you have two monster cards. I would just be trying to play both of them. You know, I'd be going out of my way. You still get to take the best card in the pack and stay in these two colors. So this is just, this is just great. Yeah, this is a great start. Hi, Meta Mario. Hi, Lord Sephiroth. Hi, everybody. 
Everyone's rolling in right now. Ooh, a raid. I swear I might take Oaken Siren. Really? It's so good to put the glyph on and it casts the ship early, but I'm totally fine with the braid. I might not end up doing it. I think it's close. I guess I'd probably just take the braid, though. Yeah, I feel like I might see another oak, but I might not see another braid. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'd play a bunch of either of them, but yeah. All right, I'm going to regret not taking this uh, fucking oak and siren, I bet. <laughs> just great for your... Um, can I ask you a personal question? Pam. Oh, is he gone? Hello. Hello. Hmm. Can you not hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, and you're gone again. I'm not saying anything. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you a question about your dogs. You can ask. I like the dinosaur if you want me to just shout out what I like. I thought you were yeah. going to tell me. Oh, I um, think it's close with this 3-5. Wait, what 3-5? Red one. You like this card? Yeah. Huh. I like it. Uh, I'd let's probably see. take the dino just because it's a little cheaper here. We already have a five mana card. Why are your dogs so crazy? I mean, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> oh, Lord Sephiroth donated to you, Ham. On your stream, on, on your Twitch, I assume. I'm not on my Twitch. No, I'm they doing... can still donate to you, even if you're not live. I would pick this guy, because it would be okay with the Soetic Lift, maybe, later. But there um, could be better cards also, for that. I would also pick that. It's just really good. How do you feel about the bounce spells, by the way? I like them. Huh? I like them. Okay. I want to have, you know, one or two ways to deal with anything. So those are usually... If, if you're, if you're blue-white, I mean, you can play Petrify. But if you're red-blue, you tend to want to have a bounce spell or two, I think. Because your dogs are so crazy, you don't want them, like, hanging out with you while you stream. So I'm, like, wondering, like, why are they so chaotic? Dogs are not crazy right now, really, because my wife's home and they're laying around with her. Oh. And if it's the afternoon and she's at work and I'm sleeping, they're laying around with me. Uh -huh. But let's say instead of that, let's say instead of me wallowing in the bed at 3 in the afternoon, I get up to, like, stream something. Well, they're going to get up and they don't like, they, they like to lay in bed with me, but they don't like to just sit in here in this room ah. so they're gonna go and they're gonna go to the living room and they're gonna look out the window and then anytime anything walks by or moves they're gonna bark at it <laughs> so that's basically what they're doing is they're just barking at stuff oh they're so cute oh another one of these Mm, I'm assuming I'm going to have more pirates, so maybe this pirate hat. It's a pirate hat, yep. I feel like anything that takes two to equip is just leagues behind the rest of the equipment because everything else takes one. It is rough. The current configuration, I'd definitely prefer not to play the pirate hat, but you know that could change and if it's the you know if it's in the deck it's not the worst thing in the world all of our other cards are are real strong oh, I gotta join. 
Hey, Callow, thank you for the follow. Ooh, another one? Is three too many, yeah, or I mean, is three good? Three may be approaching too many. Most people would probably say it's not, but I, I don't really like the cave here. Okay. And I don't really want a second pirate hat, so I would just take a third one. I think at the moment three is too many, because, like, we just have a 2-1 and a 2-2 flyer. Like, if we end up with... They're, they're better when you have, like, the 3-2 that brings in a treasure, because, like, everybody blocks out with a 2-2, then you get to play the rest. Uh... So it kind of depends, like, how aggressively statted your creatures are and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's just going to kind of naturally... We'll see how it goes. Four? <laughs> I mean, you're not going to play anything else, but... Yeah, to plug the podcast, we talk about The Wrestler a, a lot uh, this coming up. It's out now, but unedited. No. Gravis, because we're not going to play for I think. We discuss The Wrestler a lot. We both like it. One thing about it, 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 with all the equipment and map tokens running around, like you can often make your creature a size that like The Wrestler gets them pretty good. That's one part of why it's so good, I think. Oh! It's Abuelito! It's a good card. <gasps> it's, it's, it's better, than, it's better than ship. Have... What's that? Better than ship. It's it's not. No, we're not. I mean, like, you, you don't take this and think you're going blue-white instead. I mean, you'd be taking <laughs> it over a ship and a braid, a dynamaton, and a torch. Because we don't get the torch. I mean, I may still just take the torch. If you like this thing, if you haven't played it, if you want to take it, I think it's fine, and we've got a compass gnome, and we'll try to put it in our deck. I haven't but, played it. Yeah, I mean, oh. I think the right pick there is the torch. But... Wait, another glyph or the scout? Yes, no, oh, glyph. Okay. Glyph. Torch is your pick, too? Hmm. I think Torch is the better pick, but... Maybe this one? I feel strongly about that this pick, so what is this one? Oh, the... Yes. Yes. It is definitely that one. <sighs> That's a real good one with the wrestlers, too, because everybody likes to block that, because you just get to loot every time it attacks. And people so hate that. You usually block, and then you just get to wrestle. It's great. Um, how do you feel about this? I would take it. I, I don't know. It's a fine card. I don't know exactly how to feel about it. It's not great when you're on the draw sometimes, but a lot of cards aren't. I mean, I think you'll end up playing it most of the time. Torch? Yeah, I think it's Torch. I do like the 3-3. Three, three yeah. Two, but... I think it's Torch. I was gonna, I was kind of getting worried about my creature count, but I guess we're at nine. That's not too bad. And when being yeah, three, three are wrestlers, but no, I would, I would take Torch. Mm. Yeah, this or the monkey, probably the yeah, monkey. Yeah, I tend to. I mean, this is probably gonna sound weird to most people. I tend to take the creature here. I think, like. I don't know. I do like the, the red trick, but we've got a lot of stuff already. Like, we've got some equipment. We've got these wrestlers. We like It's just going to be a lot of that sort of effect. And you have to be attacking for it to ever do anything. I would just take the, the one drop creature. Uh... I actually think I'd probably take another compass gnome if we're going to actually play this ab abuelo. Abuelo is good for things at ETB, but how anything else actually good at ETB? Uh, target creature artifact. Oh, heck! That'd be messed There's up. a million things to do with it. I mean, it's fine. Like, otherwise, we would have taken... I forget what it was. There was something else in the pack that was good. Oh, another torch as well. I think I like the one-two here. Yeah, I like the one-two. Okay, nice. How do you feel about hot foot gnome? Don't like it. Why? One, two. Uh, um, 
I think if you're green red, it might be okay. If you have like big things to keep hasting out later, I'm just it's a three one and. I'm kind of leaning towards this 2-3, to... because in our deck, it'll most of the time be a 4-4 four, four we attack. It's just that a 1-2, mm. I feel like it's often, like, I'd small. Much rather have the, I'd much rather have the 1-drop there. Can I ask why? It's, like, it just... it's just so I know how to pick in the future. I know, I don't, I, I, I'm, this is why I'm a bad coach, is because I don't <laughs> know how to articulate it. Like, I just... Don't think that three drop is that good. I mean, it blocks like shit for one. So if you're ever like on the back foot and you dr like if you're on the draw and that's your turn three play, you don't win very much. I don't think. Hmm. Okay. Just a two two for one seems better to me. I, I... Okay. This format is just so fast. I thought it was more swingy than it is fast. Oh, I like the three three here. I would really not want to play that Altasaur in this deck. All your other cards don't bother me. Oh, this format cares about getting on board as soon as possible. Okay. I've never... Wait, I've seen this once. Yeah, I don't have much... I mean, we're, it's not for us. Yeah, it's not. I don't think it's that insane. Any, I mean, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for four. It's obviously fine, but I don't think it's that insane anyways. I'm thinking this Nautilus. I think that's the pick. I mean... There's also... I don't this. love that. I thought I was going to love that shot card, but I don't. And then I like the Lattice. You have a Dino or whatever, but yeah, I just like the one best here. This would make a very good, like, dwarf thingy, because you could make it stronger and, it, let's see, minus three. Here's a good spot. I mean, it sucks to take it second, I guess, but we're not, it's over nothing, so this is a good spot to pick up that bounce spell. Like, we're happy to have that. Ooh, oh my god. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh man, we're just gonna. Well, I feel like because of curve is low that we make it on the battlefield like fairly quick. But a lot of these are more like you use this to respond to things, not necessarily to like. To play all three, we could cut one of them for sure. As well. Well, we'll think about cutting them after we. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this deck has plenty, plenty of cheap things. That rare is so good. It's not for us. So even if we play white, I don't think we splash it. Well, what? Do you want to take this thing? Or this thing? I don't think you're going to play any of these cards, but I would probably take the artifact in the bottom right. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I get. I mean, you could pick either one of these. I, I was leaning the flyer at first. I didn't even see the needle. They're both really good. I mean, I, I tend to just take the scout, but I think I'll grab the needle. I'm fine either way. We don't have a lot of interact. They're both great. Hmm. I could make this into a net of wait a braided net. Can also bounce it with Abuelo if that's getting played and tap yeah. stuff, lots of stuff. This? Yeah, I can get down with that. I really do like that 3 3 pirate, but. Oh, it's also artifact, land. not just pirate. Well, the land is nice. I mean, if, we, if you're definitely going to play that flyer, you probably should take the land, honestly. It's pretty nice anyways to just put counters on your other flyers later in the game. Maybe, no, no, no wait, take this that. one? The, the, I would take that one, yeah. I don't think you're going to end up playing it, but that blue card is like the worst one of any of the blue and red cards in the pack. I forgot we were playing red for a second. <laughs> Definitely are. 
because all these loon cards have just been so good. <gasps> the heck? Oh, this five drop? Is that what you're talking about, Kahlo? Five drop? I don't think you're going to play it in this deck because this deck's so damn good. But I like that five. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I thought everybody liked that five. Apparently they don't. I'm not going to play either, but... And I see three cards here that I think could get caught. And that's about it. This deck's real good. The other one might be harder to find. And I don't think the other one's bad either. Mm. I don't think you play two of those, I don't think. I mean, you could, but just I would, I'd be playing that guy. I think. Okay. I'd be hard pressed not to find room for that three three. I like it better than a Dino, if nothing else. Really? I think so. Maybe that's wrong. What about the utility of this is better than Dino? I'll just tap something and gets in a, a full hit. I don't know. Maybe it's not. They're kind of similar. I guess we have all the Tome Raiders. Maybe we'll need the artifact. I'm less convinced on it, but I tend to like the pirate in these kind of decks. I mean, the card I think is is pirate hat might can go. I mean, I don't think it's terrible to play it. It's pretty nice on exactly the Raiders, but otherwise it's not like that great. Definitely a one planes deck. Like, I mean, look, even the third wrestler, I wouldn't normally be cutting from decks. The second bounce is fine. The hat is fine. Even that plus two plus oh combat trick up there is fine. The dino is nice. The favor is nice. You have a lot of cards that, you know, would be totally fine to play here. I just think that, I mean, the, the Waylaying Pirate, I guess, is your weakest card. If you want to play the Dino over it, it's fine. I kind of do, because it buffs this. It's fine. I'm fine with it. I like both the cards. Both of them are my boys. Yeah, but then if I get a counter out, I mean, another artifact out, I can put it on this, because it's, like, on another Pirate. Huh. Yeah, they both, there's advantages to both cards, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, Sid Phoenix, I was wondering about that too. If we want like more mountains because we have these. Yeah, we probably would rather have eight, seven. I mean, the deck would honestly have been, the and, and with a little bit of hindsight even, would have been way better if we just didn't take the white card. <laughs> then we wouldn't have played these gnomes. We could play uh, cards that are slightly better than the gnomes. Ooh, can we take yeah. out one gnome and then just keep one and then this I, thing? I don't think so. No? Okay. I mean, you could, but <laughs> you kind of need to play them. Okay. I mean, we'd, if we took it out, what would we take? We, we could put in another okay. bounce spell. Nah. I'd want, like, you don't have that many two drops anyways. Oh, that's six. true. So uh, we probably would have taken, like, a different two drop over it or something at some point in the draft. It's beautiful. And also, like, you can keep, you could easily, you could also, another good reason to put in the, the extra mountain. I don't think we need to put any more extra mountains in instead of islands, but you don't care that much about playing the wrestler on turn one. So if you draw in with two mountains and a gnome, you can keep because you can get a blue with the gnome. But if you drew two islands and a gnome, you probably couldn't keep if it had, you know, a raider and torch and stuff in it. Oh. A lot of your two island gnome hands would, would look real poor, I think. Mm. Let me stamp that. 
because that's something I haven't thought about before. Yeah, just you know, I, I don't know if it's enough to go nine six. I don't think it is, but yeah, yeah, that that's just another thing that pushes it in the favor of extra amount. Okay. Um, okay. Another thing about this Abuelo, it's a great card, don't get me wrong, but our, our deck, it ended up, like, super good, super focused, and super fast, and, like, the Abuelo wants to be a little bit, like, you want to get value out of that thing, you know, the game's going to go a few more turns after you play it, right? We're just trying to kick the snot out of them, so if the deck ended up a little less optimized, the, card, the Abuelo would be a lot better, but it's so optimized that... Okay, so you know, I mean, I would play it. No, I would play it now. You drafted it. You like it. It's not that. It's not that big a deal. I'm fine playing. Oh it. no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just gonna do this to see what it looks like without it. Okay. Let's do. Let's see. What else do I put in? Well, the dino would be in. Yep, and then maybe this. Probably that could be in the pirate hat's totally fine. And I think like one more land. Yeah, you'd you'd play seventeen land. You'd probably not play that cave. No? Okay. You could play it, but I don't think I would with all these one mana cards in the deck. I would I would I mean, you could even play sixteen land, maybe. Uh and then the the it's either with this or this. How many creatures? Yeah, have? I don't mind oh, the hat. Yeah, I don't mind the three five. Even the wrestler. There's a lot of options. I mean, I'm fine if you play this abuelo though. Hey, thanks for the tip. Three three threes. Why threes? Are threes good luck number in your culture? Heckity heck yeah. I mean, um, we took it over a torch, and I don't even care about a third torch. <laughs> but then we took that land over something. I think it might have been one of those three threes or something, that if we, we would want that three three if we weren't playing the two ones. So, like, it ended up, you know, I think we probably took one gnome that we didn't want to take and one land that we didn't want to take because of that pick. But, I mean, I, I think you should just maybe play it. I don't It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I do agree that this might be better focused, though. <laughs> Especially if we had, you know, got to take a couple other different cards because we weren't trying to facilitate the splash. Yeah. Every day, I you, grow more stubborn towards splashing. You don't want this 3-5 in this version. I don't know what else we were supposed to change, but that wasn't in. What did I... Uh, I'm looking. I'm I don't know. Card. The fuck? I don't see it either. It's weird. Wait, am I? Do I have enough? Oh, the, the the gold card, the abuelo itself. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Galeon and abuelo would just be the filthiest thing on earth. I mean, no, the card is going to be great in here. It's great with the needle. I mean, hell, it's even good with just a scout. It's good with the pirates. Mm -hmm. You can blink wrestlers and shrink stuff. And, I mean, the card is a nightmare to play against. It's, it's a very good card. And I, it's going to be fine in your deck. It's just I think it would be a little better in a slower deck. Yeah, it, it slows down our deck for sure. Thanks, no strips. Hey, Hugo's also here. Hugo's here. He's been here, but I wanted you to know that he's here, Ham. Okay. I knew that. <laughs> I did. Okay, let's see. Oh, geez, this is awkward. You're keeping this, it's fine. Yeah, I'm keeping it. It's just like, man, when you see this before you see a gnome, it's kind of like, oof. Yeah, I mean, I think your mana's pretty good for the for the splash. It, 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 it'll it happen like this sometimes. This, this isn't that bad. You have one card, it's hard to cast. What's worse is if, if you know, this mountain was your planes. That's when you want to just rip your head off. This is an artifact. Yeah, I like it.
Probably this because I have another one. Sure. Hmm. I want. I think you need to loot as soon as possible. Hopefully they don't play something that's like a 2-3. That's good. So here, I, I like to play the gnome first, and then you can draw the land off of that. Oh. Just probably get the plains. I mean, you could get the mountains so that you could play a goblin and have double red, but I think I'd get the plains. No need to send the well. It has no. It has vigilance. You're right. So I mean, I think I would just discard the one drop, just because it doesn't do a whole lot. All your other cards are so good. Yep. Zated. A no and a one four vigilance like that three three or that two two is never doing anything. Oh, okay. I mean, still isn't really doing anything. That card does things now. But eight. Um. I'm supposed to like use all my mana, so I play this thing, right? Yeah, you don't really have a card you want to discard, but I'd still play the pirate. And I just I'd tap down the bat and I'd attack with everything. Just wouldn't use the one this turn. You still have. I mean, you could just not attack with the glyph, I guess, but I think I would. I would trade that for the glyph. Wait, that's the other glyph. This is the no. Oops. I think that, that I think that's a fine attack. So. That's a heck of a card. Oh heck! That's I would have five if I did We're this. We're gonna pump this thing probably. I mean, I think I like attacking with everybody again. And then I'm assuming we're going to pump this Nautilus. Yeah, do that. I'm going to pump it. Oh, yeah. It's not lo as long as they didn't block it with something. Okay. Come on, mountain. Does it make more bats? It does. If it dies, it makes one. I should probably deal five damage to that thing, right? Because it has life link. Just see how the game. Right now, you're crushing. I think. Like if they don't answer some of your stuff, I mean, we could just bounce a pirate. Or it's a weird one to put it on. Um. Uh, that's probably what it is. They probably want more flyers. It's either block there or don't block anything. It's probably wise to block. We've we've got some powerful stuff. Oh god. Dust thing is turned on. I think you just play that and probably pass. Ooh, maybe I should flicker this? We should right now. Does it put a stun counter on something? Yeah, but what are we going to stun? I mean, they're just going to pump up something we don't stun. I, I don't think we need to do that yet. Because that way we they don't... We might even want to bounce the gnome and get a mountain or something. 
Okay. Plus, you can bounce things after you block. So, like, if they send oh. the life in here, you might want to block and bounce so they don't get any life. Oh. Like they, might, they might do a lot of weird things. Should I attack? No, not with the flyer for sure, because, I mean, you're holding off at least two of their flyers by leaving your one back. Ah, oh, okay. They can pump one. Oh, like that's You don't want to hit them for two and then take five, right? You that's can hit true. them for zero and take three. That's a lot better. So they are doing this. So we're gonna have to think a bit here what we want to do. They'll probably attack with this, so maybe I just want to like um, bounce this. Okay, first off, your guy doesn't come back right now if you blink it. It's the end. The end of next end step. So yeah. on their end you step, you don't have to do anything now. You want to uh, let them attack. Yeah. But I mean, when they do attack with it, I'll just block with yeah, this flicker. Yeah, let's see what they do. Okay. I mean, That's vigilant. I, I, like, I like to block with the gnome and bounce that, honestly. Okay. Get a mountain on top. Just play this boat. Now blink the gnome, yeah. I like that they only attacked with one thing there like that. That was nice. Yeah, it was a free attack with this. Almost. Get us a mountain. You could even take the cave, I guess, if you want. I think, yeah, maybe the cave was better so we could start double. Yeah, we should have taken the cave. So then one more we could use a Buello twice. But either way, we're playing this thing. And uh, what do I blow up? Probably something on the floor, because this is holding back with this one. I mean, either the 1-1 one, one bat or one of the 3-3 three, three lifelinks. Probably 3-3 three, three lifelink. Ooh. Oh, it's just one goal. We don't get to flick or anything. I forgot about the treasure. That's nice, too. Yep. That's it for now. We can either block it with the 3-3. Three, three. The two two and the two one. I think I'm fine just blocking it with the three three. We've got other stuff to bounce. Mm, the utility of the three three would be better to bounce though, right? Okay. If you want to block it with the other two, that's fine. Either way is fine with me. If they play another tithing bleed or something, this is gonna feel a lot worse. We're already gonna probably be bouncing the boat, is what I was thinking. No, I think I will trade it because I still have this actually. So I probably want more things on the ground that I want. I'm okay with trading, or just jump blocking with. On my turn and their turn. You're right because now I have extra treasure. To fucking do it you several times. You don't want to attack with it because they have a death touch creature. I don't think we want to kill this. I guess we did. Maybe we do want to kill the evangelist. I don't know. I want to maybe kill Blastus and then just. No, I don't have to trade. Trading. Why would I trade for the evangelist when I could just kill it? Right. I think that we should probably kill. We're going to blink the ship regardless. We can blink it right now and on their turn too. Yeah, blink it now. Blinking now. We're not going to attack with it because they have a death touch creature. So we're going to blink it. We're not attacking with anything. It's going to come back and we're going to kill something. I think it should probably be the evangelist. We don't bolt the evangelist. We're taking eight in the air. 
Um. Uh oh. We'd yeah. obviously be killing one of the other flyers if we didn't. We'd be killing the bat. Okay, arena. And then we would, and then we would, when they attacked, we would take six from the flyers, and we would likely crew the ship and block the event. But I like doing this better. Okay, I have to restart arena because it crashed. Okay. Hopefully you make it back. It's a pretty cool game. Okay, so I had to like do a bunch of like crazy computer updates and stuff like that with the motherboard and whatnot. And it finally, so it's okay that arena crashes, but before it used to crash my entire computer, so even like OBS would close. For your turn. One, two, okay. Oh, I can blink it even three times. <gasps> if they kill the flyer, it's kind of. I want to blink my boat now. Yeah. Just we're taking so much in the air. I think it's, I mean, play it out, but I don't think there's anything wrong. You know? Do I blink anything out? No, right? It doesn't, doesn't do anything, no. Yeah. We're taking like seven now, then we draw something, yeah, it's just not going to work out. It's not clear we were, we were going to win for sure, even if they didn't have that. They have so many things. What does the ship cost to crew? Two. I have to do that and attack. Just try to hit a bunch of stuff off the top. Or wait, that's the wrong card, isn't it? I was thinking of a different ship. This one does What does this ship do? This ship doesn't let you play cards off the top of your deck. No, that's the blue-red no, no, one. It this one's kind of done all it's going to do. All right, yeah. You're dead. Dead. Because they're four in the air. No, there's nothing else I can do. Well, they also have that thing that's pumping two more. Oh, two more? I can't even, like, try to survive by one more. Mm, nope. Well. They kind of got us with lifelink this game. Yeah. And playing that evangelist and getting it back and playing it again. Maybe they won't pump a flyer. <laughs> yes. And then maybe they won't craft their blade. <laughs> Anything is possible. They went for it. Lola Man did say you give the opponent the opportunity to mess it up. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying they they can beat you if they try. Do it right. No reason to just concede. Well, Abuela was fun. Yeah, we 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 did have like two turns. We didn't really draw anything that was like impactful. Evangelist is very correct. I've played it before. I don't think I know how to play with it very well. Because I didn't find that it did that much for me. But So obviously I'm playing it wrong. What if you just attack and they block it with a 2-2? It does a lot. Like it just gives you two flyers and it traded with a card. Don't be afraid to just do that with these type of cards. So that Time card is good two. because you can trade with it and it's still... Yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't want to trade with it because you pump your whole team and it's even better, but kind of like that Kellen, that one game that we were watching, and I'm like, you know, it's not the end of the world if we just attack, it trades with their three drop and gets a trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, you might not have to go through, like, okay, let's try to make sure it connects and 
stays alive the whole game. Like, that just doesn't... Okay, we should have equipped. Oh, we fuck! The damage. We still should have equipped. I got excited. Post-combat still would have been better than... Yeah, it would have been good use of my mana. I mean, you're probably going to glyph the thing anyway. Well, probably not. You'd probably rather play the scout and glyph the map token. Really? But I can attack right now for like five. You can do that if you want. Go either way. I, I lean. I like to play the scout here myself. I'm, if you want to play the glyph, that's fine. Okay. What I'm not this... convinced that it's wrong to play the glyph. Either. What is your reasoning about the scout? What can it do for you that you like? Mostly, it's just you're, you you use a map token instead of a shock that's already on the to make this five. Four. You're missing out on about three damage because you're hitting them for two next turn instead of five, potentially. Oh, you're thinking about the next turn. Okay. Well, I mean, they're going to take seven from the glyph and the flyer instead of taking ten from the glyph and the glyph. Oh. So you give up some damage, but you get to, to put the glyph on a worse card. And there's some things like maybe they had the four damage to an attacker and it would have use their mana better. Right, so yeah, so here we want to put the glyph on the map and we want to equip the 2-2 two -two on the, the ground pounding 2-2. Two -two. With torch. Then we have attacks with everything. We do not sack the torch. Man. It's also a little harder for them to answer your threats, like, one at a time, this way. Like, if we had played the glyph and they had an instant speed thing, I mean, you do get to discover off of it, but... Like, if they got to kill it for two mana, then maybe play the answer to your next threat. Okay. This way, they just kind of come out all at once. Pirate, bing bang, equip. Pirate, bing bang. Yeah. You just sack the torch and they die. You sack the torch? Killing. If you don't sack the torch, they live. Oh, you're right. This is lethal. Yeah. Huh. Wow, I feel like my eyes have been opened. <laughs> just thinking one turn ahead. I think you're is probably going to win that game even if you just play the glyph. No, right, but you made it one whole turn quicker, meaning that they couldn't have put down another creature on the ground to, like, block the glyph. They had nothing It didn't make it any quicker, really. It just seemed a little safer, I don't know. Okay. You know... You can tell me to shut the fuck up while I start this and you don't want to hear it, but like as you've been coaching me, I feel like you're always like almost not giving yourself enough credit for your decisions. Cause you're like, I don't know, it could be not that much better, or like I don't know. I'm kind of trying to more reassure you that what you're doing aren't these terrible mistakes. Trust me, I see okay. people that do some fucking terrible things. And I let them know I'm not exactly babying you or anything here. Like I think your play has some merit. I'm not sure. Like, my play is not just 100% correct. Like, the one turn that I thought you fucked up bad was attacking that time when they could block <laughs> with a 3-2, and I told you that. Yeah. Now, yeah no. I wasn't mean as a snake about it or whatever, but I made it clear that I knew that that was incorrect. Yeah. These other, like, there's, there's merit to your, to your other, to the other play as well. Okay. I guess what I'm saying is like, no, you're not baby me, but giving a certainty lot, to a lot your of times it's unclear. It's it's unclear what you know which one is 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 better. And if if one is better, it's not going to be better by a lot. Do you don't you think that matters if it's better by a little bit? I do, which is why I told you I would and went through all that. Do we keep this? Oh yeah, this is a good hand. 
I mean, if nothing else, you get to play Raider, Attack, Cogwork, Wrestler, or whatever. Right? This is a good hand. But I feel like this makes it so that we everything costs like one mana more, essentially. Yeah. That's blue. In the worst case, I mean, maybe you just draw an island. We're Your hopeful. hand's pretty good, even if you just draw a mountain. There, now your hand's perfect. Go get an island. This turn, we can play the captain. And a torture, whatever. No, we can't. We can just play the captain, I guess. But still, still a good hand. <laughs> Let's think for a second. Yeah, because we might. No, yeah, we attack with I mean, it. You don't want to like give up too many captain triggers necessarily. Um, yeah. Hmm. I mean, we can play if we play torch and equip and attack. You're just gonna take three. I don't think that's good enough. I mean, I think we just play captain and don't play anything else. It's either that or we bounce their creature, but I don't like that. I just like to play the cap. You think they wouldn't block with one of... You think that they would not block, like, try to trade with it if I equipped it? Yeah, there's no shot. And you I mean, think they that... They have a pickaxe and everything. There's no way they would trade. Okay. Plus, it's already holding back a, another two-power creature anyways, because you're going to equip one and attack with it, so the other one's sitting back. Okay. This isn't... This is actually fine, because they, they can't even attack with the one... Uh, yeah. They can exit or something. All right. Now... Oh, I can't hear you. It's breaking out again. Okay. A set of land would have been great. I'm yeah. To... I mean, uh, I think we just want to bounce the 4-4 four, four and then play a torch and put a counter on something. Bounce it right now? Or maybe... I think so. I mean, we're going to attack. Oh. Now we can play the torch. And then... Storm puts a counter on the raider, and then the raider can attack. Probably block. Oh, they're at 12. That's why they would just rather take. The okay. They were at 20 or whatever. Yeah. They, they took a bunch off of that thing. I thought we were. they were still at 20, but that makes more sense. That's why they would block this time and not before. Oh, yeah. Are you paying? Hey, sick. Do you know this sick lick music person? Him? Oh. Okay. Well, I'm going to time you out, buddy. I don't like you talking about people like that. So here I would like to, you definitely want to play the Tome Raider. And then with the cave, you'd want to torch the 2-1. Because both of your other creatures are pirates. So now we can attack with everything. They're going to block Storm, and you get to play Cogwork. Pump Storm, shrink their thing, and they're just, they're just, they're beat. No I don't out. sacrifice it. No. You have to hit next. They know your card now. They can do much about it. They'll still do it. Do it. I mean, do they, it, you they coward. They can block the three one. That's their. That, that's the only way to. Yeah, they did it actually. I'll just. I think I would still play the wrestler here, just to put a counter on the two two. The captain or the. I would put it on the raider. So if they have a removal, they want to use it on the captain anyway. I, they played around it the best they could, but it's still tough for them. Uh, 
Oh, that's another one. Okay. Yay! They're almost at. Okay, hold up. Let me figure out if I can leave though right now. Okay. We can think about it. I'm thinking about it too. No, I think at most we'd own hit. Wait. Uh, I mean, block. I think we're supposed to just attack for three and then play the Abuelo. Yeah. Should I equip this to something, though? Can't play a. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'll attack first. Yeah. With everything, though? If you want to, I mean... I, I I'm just wondering gonna... if I'm only going to get three... I should well, just... What if, we... what if I just attack with this one? That's what I was saying. I okay. at least want to do that. Yeah. Uh, no. Cave is pay one, and then you can add a color. And we need to pay one to add the white. So this really costs four. Bye, Nordic Grass. Thank you so much for coming by. Definitely wanted to attack because we don't want them to be able to attack with a torch. So we want to play our artifact because it'll pump our pirate. Put the torch on the flyer and just send everything. Everything. Who sat on the torch? So we'll hit for one, two. Gonna be best of luck for three. Uh, do I sack and the just, torch? I, I, I wouldn't know. No, I okay. would not. I mean, if you sack it, it makes him block, but he pretty much has to block anyways because you just sack it next turn. Kind of doesn't have any choices. Oh, That's still fine. Should I re equip it? Maybe you could trade better. Yeah, probably, but I mean, mostly, they're, I think they almost have to torch this thing to have a chance. So, I mean, you, you might want to re-equip it. You might as well just throw it a wrestler. I mean, they're going to have to equip the torch, pay the ward. They'll have no other blocker. They're going to have to have something else. It's going to be tough. If we draw any land, we can crack the cave. If we draw red, we can play this ship. That's weird. Because that, I don't see how they ever win doing that. I guess if they find a removal. Seems like they had to start by killing the fire. I mean, if they have nothing else they can do, I guess they can. Just... They can't attack. You're right. They can't attack because then they won't have enough blockers so can't not attack <laughs> they just die to your flyer right? yeah they're dead now i guess they have a couple of treasures left oh no they can put now they have treasure they can put out that four four no they have to pay two for oh that's one. right definitely no blocks i mean they'd have to have something to do with these two treasures at instant speed just take three damage tap there Somebody in bronze or whatever that goes. I guess season we start. Yeah, this season we started. Hmm. 
Jamming them out. Um, this is fine. We can loot away lands. You gotta keep. It's not, you know, near the top of the hands you're going to see, but... Yeah, I'm spoiled by the last few hands we've had. Um, no, Metal Mario, the the one time we did get to, like, Flicker the Galeon, um, we lost. It's very goth. Ooh. Okay, well, this is gonna be one of these awesome Lost Caverns of Ixalan games. I'm gonna equip it attack. What? Should I? They're gonna block with a three four. Do I need how how desperate am I to loot, or if at all? Not desperate enough to throw away a torch, I don't think, so that they just don't block. I don't know. I think you're better off like trying to equip and double block, which is also not good. But I think that goes better than attacking and sacking the torch on the 3 4 so the creature doesn't die. Just to loot. This is so unnecessary. We have no attacks. No blocks. Thanks. Draw. Great. Play. I guess a Nautilus could attack. Should I? You might as well. Oh, it has Vigilance. That's a good idea. Yeah, it should attack this turn. It should not torch, yeah. Basically a free 2 day. They block with the four or five. Then. That'd be great for us. To use the map on something. You might want to put it on the Nautilus, or you might want to put it on the Flyer. Put it on the Nautilus, it can at least block the four or five. But if we put it on the Flyer, like that, like he's got a frog in him. I don't know, it's close. God damn it! because that's how Explore tends to work. Eight. 
piece of combat trick. We're never blocking this thing. Yeah, I guess it wasn't. I should have not put it on the Nautilus anyways. It didn't get there, but we couldn't block even if we hit. That was my bad. So you think if they're attacking like this, they have like a combat trick for sure? Well, it's face up. Oh, it's face up. I didn't even see it. You're right. Um, I'm not going to block this either. You could block the frog if you want. It's going to grow their other creature, though. It takes up some of their mana. It's up to you. If you block it, you're going to block it with the glyph. Wait. Yeah. Probably block it. Maybe they maybe they use the trick to save it. That probably ups our chances from fucking one percent to two percent or something. More flooded than Noah. <laughs> This is going to come out of boat range. Okay. I mean, I can't do anything, so I might as well, like... If you want to try to win the game, I guess you sack the land on the flyer and attack, but... Uh... Frog on top of their deck. We can never block their stuff because they have that trick. Oh, why they didn't attack? That thing's menace, right? That three three. I don't yeah. Know why it We were supposed to be at three instead of six. Oh, we can attack with fire again. This is a cruel, cruel joke. Rather it happened this game, we were probably losing anyways, is all I could say, but. Not much fun, this game. Nah. Oh, wait, I was supposed to take action. Okay, fuck it. It doesn't matter. They, they can't give it... You're dead anyway. They can't yeah. give it death touch. It, I mean, that's, it didn't, that didn't matter. I mean, I think your deck's really strong. So if you go two and three with it again, I mean, it just that's just what happens sometimes in this format, I think. I think this deck is pretty much as good as, you know, all but the very, very best decks I've drafted. I think it's, I think it's quite good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take, like, two minutes to, like, grab water and then, like, try to right. fiddle with my heater so it turns on. I'll be... I could go for a water myself. All righty. Um, I'm going to flashbang you guys. Close your eyes.
Pam, are you there? Lord Sephiroth, you're not crazy for not liking one drops, but I feel like they do have their utility, even if they tend to be like dinky, which is probably why you don't like them. But if you have like a creature on board on turn one, that means you're ready to do damage by turn two. And if you play another creature in turn two, you have two creatures compared to their one creature on their turn. And if you're on the draw, it also almost makes it seem like as if you got to also play first, essentially. Because if they don't have a one drop and they're on the play, but you have a one drop and you're on the draw, it's really like good for you so that you're not behind. Because these last two formats, maybe even like last four formats, with the exception of Lord of the Rings, I think. Um, it's been like so important to like have board presence as soon as possible. Hi, yeah, I, miss, I miss the days when you laughed when your opponent played a one drop. Because <sighs> they were all so bad. But now it's not that way. Now the one drops are better than a lot of two drops used to be. Yeah. Your your favorite chatter is here, Ham. Oh yeah, great one. He'll be here for six minutes. Prediction. Fall asleep. Oh, Albalism is going to be here for six minutes and fall asleep? It's, that's what he does. Oh, he said, hey, Dad. I don't have the stream open or anything because I just focus on the coaching. So Yeah, no, that's great. That's, that's, that's what I'm letting you know. Just so you guys know, if you didn't I, catch I, on. No, I acknowledge Albalism's presence. <laughs> You've been witnessed. I cannot see what he's typing. He's not really typing anything. Yeah, he's he being a good boy. He, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. <laughs> I took a nap myself tonight. I can't say much. I'm like really happy for you that you did that. Because <laughs> I'm not galactic, so like naps. I also took a nap before. <laughs> So I, I, I took a nap at work today too. Um... Oh, I should have put out a blue land. Well, they're not going to play a flash creature. It's uh, tough because you may should have just played your 2 2 artifact creature. Not this one? It's hard, it's hard to say. Like, if they just abrade this, if they just abrade the storm now, we get nothing out of it. We're missing a counter if we don't play it, though. I mean, go ahead and play the storm. It's fine. It's just, I think it's a choice. Like, we definitely get a counter if we go storm torch next turn. Uh -huh. Whereas this way, we may not. And we, like, and we miss a damage from our raider. If they have not, you know, well, they didn't have anything, so this looks best. This has the most upside for sure. I mean, I think if I'm playing against somebody on like day two of an event and they keep their hand and they don't do anything on two, I'd probably put them on a braid most of the time. Monkey. Fine. And then I would just attack with both. It's pretty like... Both? Yeah, I mean, you can play the wrestler and pump the other one. Like, you could also put Equip it a sword, and... but I would not, because I'd want to, if he doesn't block, I'd want to play the glyph. But they might just block every time, so it might be better to just... Your call on the equip. I think it will be very tempting for them to block my captain. Tempting if you don't, but then we're going to miss. 
Yeah, I don't know. Huh? Huh? Do it. Do it. Oh, man. Okay. Well, this also just like kind of shows them more what we have. I, th I don't think I'd play it here. It can blow a fight spell out if they have one. I just go ahead and pass now. I feel like if they if we had two mana up, they might not put us on exactly that. And then when they don't block, we get to play another another creature. Have to play the glyph. I wasn't so sure they'd sniff it out though, so. Hmm. I think maybe doing what you said was in the beginning to put out the glyph instead would have been better because this is the type of deck that wants to like hit them as fast as possible, right? I mean, this hit them just as fast, if not faster. This worked out fine. I just think last turn, if we think they're not going to block, it's way better not to put the torch. If they don't block because they have a fight spell they want to use, then this is great. Probably just during a terrible spot here is my guess, which most decks would be against this start. Yeah. They didn't have just like an abrade, so unless they just drew it, they don't have it. If they have a fight spell, that ain't working with the wrestler. They cannot be able to block your creatures. They may just quit or something, but now we can play the glyph and pump some. Yeah, Arstall, I'm like surprised. You're one of the few people that expresses that they like this format, which is not bad. It was There's just surprising. People that do for sure. Oh, I love going 0-3 on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> so they have something in their hand that instant speed. I think they're just disconnected. Yes, but they also have something in hand. Um really? of the wander glow don't care connected hey look alcoholism is still awake sure Whatever you said was not heard. Said he probably just woke up from a short nap. He said he napped today at work and that he drooled all over himself. That is a squirrel pet. Look how cute it is. Well, it's a squirrel mite. Yay, we got to play some magic. You didn't say all over, just a little. Just a little bit of drool. <laughs> yeah, the fact that it dances is so great. Uh... Maybe we will get to go to four wins and break even. I mean, this, this deck, I think, it, you know, would be a four or five win deck at least without bad luck. Yeah. Yes, this is a strong deck. 
I feel like this is a type of deck that would trophy if I was a slightly better player and didn't have bad luck. I feel like this deck is very likely to trophy if you, you know, think you're making big mistakes with it. Thank you, Merit Liege. Guys, I, I'm, I'm holding this hot hands pack thing because my hands get cold and if, apparently it also dehydrates me. So now my hands are all wrinkly and gross. I would keep this. Absolutely. Hands great. Might as well just equip the thing. I was hoping to block. Yeah, it's just never gonna happen. Sniffed out again, yeah. Get, I get sniffed out. I, I think I might have just equipped there and attacked and not sacked. I don't know. Maybe I stink, guys. Maybe that's why opponent keeps sniffing me out. Everybody plays the wrestler and arena kind of pot stuff. So we definitely want to braid this thing. Probably just put another torch out too. We can then we can sack the torch we have. Oh, the right. Let's see I would say. Yeah, and kill this thing, right? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, that turn felt so good. This is interesting. Right? Reach in there, too. I mean, I think I might just equip it. No, they're 19. I guess we have to play the flyer. Oh, well, this sucks. This is like a win, honestly. This, this, I'd much rather them do this than play a 4 5 here. I mean, it kills your creature, but. Goodbye, Abuelo. So I. I would like to leave one of these back. I'd like to equip. Not sack. Why did, uh, why would you like to leave these back instead of attacking? To try to just kill his 3-3. Three, three. I think it goes better. We we want to make sure we get to play this ship on that four or five and not just die first. Oh, so play it out now, not leave it in my hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're playing okay. it now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I mean it's close whether we move. The, if we don't move the thing, he's more likely to attack into this. So I think I wouldn't move it. Okay. Just because I want to incentivize this three three to attack, I want to wrestle it and double it. Oh, we can double block. Okay. Four. Hmm. 
my mind started registering this as like an infant spell instead of a creature. Gives us a little bit more time to draw the fifth land. Like if we don't have it right this turn, mm. or not. Okay, okay that's nice. Can go. I think that should go on wrestler. The not the torch. Yeah, I like to put that on the wrestler. Probably put the torch on the wrestler as well. So it's attack number six. I mean, we could sack. It stops them from playing like a six drop if they have one. Up to you if you sack. I think I probably wouldn't, but I don't know. Well, it if they block it, it dies anyways, right? So, might as well kill this thing too. Yeah, I mean, it's just did we want to use our torch on that thing? Also, it's if they do trade now, we don't have an artifact at all, but we'll probably have an artifact. Two, one, two, but I mean, yeah, there's an artifact. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. We want to try to look for land, I think, right? Use the map on probably one of the ground guys. I don't know, you could use it on the flyer. Use it on something just because we drew another artifact. We didn't draw another artifact. I don't think we did. Most spells probably are going to go to the graveyard in this spot. All right, yes. land, that's good anyways. We're getting number six. And there's a heck of a card is we have this boat. Yeah. Even oh. if they play like a 7-7, seven, seven, we can just attack with everything and play the boat. Oh. That's not going to be... I mean, they're going to live through the turn or whatever. But that's not saving them. I would, I would just sack your land to pump somebody, pump the flyer. You could play the island as well. Oh, you're gonna play that? I don't think I'd play that. Is this only creatures? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I would just put two counters on the flyer. Boop. Let's go. Yes! Worth win. Big for the prizes. The difference between three, two and three and three and four are the big ones. Dude, seriously. Like, it's so stupid. Yeah. Well, it feels stupid for you, but they're, they've got a good reason to do it. It's not stupid for them, the company. Okay, this would go better in a torch, right? I don't know. It kind of depends what they play. I think you should probably go get your cave that can tap for any color because it's kind of like a spell land and we, we do want to get our white mana. Here, I mean, I would definitely put it on the 2-1. Because 
because they have a 1 4 that would block it anyways. So the torch. 2. Petrified. That would suck. Because then I can't even discover it. Well, if I get the boat, this could, this could crew it. <laughs> Heat bot bag. It's just equip and attack. And they either chump block or take six. Oh yeah, they can't. Okay. You can play the one four and change the equipment to that. Should change the equipment, I guess. So we might want to put two counters on it next turn, then it's a four. This thing? Yeah. Oh. That I mean we probably don't want to do it now because you could double block it. It's trying to think ahead a little bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think we still want to put the counters on the Nautilus. And then I think we attack with both and shock the and shock the three two. He's gonna be able to block the Nautilus then, but I think that's fine because we don't want to just like move the thing and then we don't get to sack our land at all. And like this one's really good to have counters on. Like you have two huge threats, but I I definitely I think I like sacking. I don't know. Are we really? Yeah, I don't want him to block with a one four and a three two on the five four. So yeah. I like sacking. Which gives him a free, you know, he's not taking damage from the Nautilus's turn, but it's a problem next turn still for sure. It's a 6 3 or a 3 6. Okay, he didn't find the free block with his 1 4 when we were tapped out, already played a land. That was weird. Weird. That's what it was. It was fucking terrible. They just there it is. Would have been a lot worse two turns ago. It's still bad, but. If they deal with this Nautilus, too. Where'd this come from? Oh, oh good Acatacal. Grief. That card is so good. Threat? Wait. We can really do. Just gonna put that. I don't. Maybe we're supposed to. You know what? I think we do sack the torch to kill the one one here. Really? I think so. What does that do? Then they have to. They have to lose a real creature or take six. Otherwise, they're just going to block with the 1-1. One, one. I think we should probably do it. Wait, walk, walk me through that again? I think they would chump block if we didn't. Okay. So now if they don't block, we pump, they take 6. Okay. If they block, they're losing a good creature. And they can't kill the Nautilus with a double block or anything, If we even if we pump. Oh, this creature Eight is good with counters. Eyes. What's that? This or creature is good with counters. Yeah, very good with counters. I 
I mean, I, I have to imagine they were chump blocking if we didn't do that, is what I was thinking. Mm. If they weren't going to chump block, then we, sh we would have just killed them. So we shouldn't sack it, but. Okay, that was good. Uh, two thirty-five. Ooh, lots of tap all their white, so they okay. They had another white. They're they're really going out of their way to try to die. It seems like but <laughs> they had another white, so it didn't. Matter. No. Here you can't really attack because they can just block with a four. Or if you pump, it's a trade. So kind of stuck. I mean, we're probably just gonna. Not. They're at four. They've got multiple things coming out. They have base. We have to draw a flyer, and they just have to not have an answer for it. So they're going to be able to flip the monument. That's going to trigger Aquapa call. Mm -hmm. Stuff. Seems oh. oh, this hurts so much. Help! Pretty much over. They have a flyer. Yeah, and they're getting another card here. Ah! Looks good, except they have that expensive draw spell they just dis discarded, and I don't know why they're playing green. Maybe they're splashing just the land. I doubt they're doing that. Maybe they are. I wouldn't say it's crazy. They are! <laughs> I mean, they're going to activate it, but I, I, I assume there's green spells in the deck somewhere. I think. Ah, it was looking so good. Yeah, it looked all right for a while. I mean, we got a little lucky, I guess, that all their petrifies were not at the, not in their opening hand. Like, if they, petri if they had one of those two petrifies on curve, like, that game wouldn't have even been close. But since they didn't, it got to be, we got to do a few things there. Okay. I think I'm good on coaching for the night. Yeah, I mean, unless you had, like, specific questions or something, I was good on it, too, you know? Yeah, I don't. I actually feel like I got, like, so much out of this coaching session, um, yeah. which is shorter than the other ones we've had, actually. Well, one thing, I mean, look, I don't feel like I have a great grasp on this format, but I do feel like I was well-rested. I didn't, like, stream before this. You know, I didn't, like, I've had a wake up like it's not like i woke up early to do the one on the weekend but it was kind of like you know i was still just kind of getting my wits about me this is my prime hours and you know i felt like i was a little more in tune with the session myself so yeah okay yeah, yeah and i feel like i just had to like i kept on asking you why and then i realized it didn't work and then i think i started asking you the right questions and then i started getting a lot more out of it good too yeah okay well guys uh right. there you You're go still streaming. have a fun stream if not have a good night okay go hassle mac or something <laughs> that's probably what i'm gonna do <laughs> thank you ham so there you go um we had a really good deck but at the same time i feel like we got a lot of knowledgeable stuff out of that session so if you guys um, Want to step up your game? This is one of the best people that you could probably ask to coach you. Um, my only criticism, again, is that you, you, as a student, have to do your part and ask the right questions. And then you'll definitely get more out of it. Um, my brain is mushy now. Uh, coaching is so intense for me. Like, I was starting to get used to it because I was doing it, like, every two weeks, almost every week at one point. But 
the last time I asked him to coach me was over a month ago. It was back in 10, 14. So now my brain isn't as capable of like receiving all this information at once again. Um, and um, just asking why doesn't because some people aren't as good at describing their intuition and some people aren't as good at describing um, why to do the things they do. They just like, with really good players, if they don't coach, they're not like used to being teachers. They just intuitively know certain things already from the experience that they've gained and the pattern recognition that they have. Um, and so when you add, and they're not used to like describing all of that, um, it's as, it's bad to just ask them why, um, because it doesn't like give them a direction of what to answer. So instead I started asking, um, it's not that it's not as effective as just doing it when it comes to teaching. It's, it's really good for, for the most part, um, a new learner or a new magic player to like know the reasons as to why they're doing the things they are so that they can also apply those rules to similar situations moving forward. Um, so you start asking questions like, what about this card is more effective to put out on the battlefield than this card? Like, how is it more effective? What about this do you prefer more? What does this do for you that this wouldn't do for you, right? Um, that helps a lot more. If you just do it, you will learn why in time, 